Janesville, Wisconsin, a historic city on the Rock River, looks at the city's pattern of growth and development, much of it focused on the Rock River over the past 150 years. The rich display of historic architectural styles and building types found here still provides a great deal of information about the resources and ideas that shape the city of today. In Rock County, government land surveys were conducted between 1832 and 1838. They mapped a territory along the Rock River, which was forested with burr oak and thick underbrush. The first settlers of what was to be Janesville arrived in 1835. In the next year, plats for three villages were laid out, Wisconsin City, Rockport, and Henry Janes Platt. Janes Platt, on the east bank of the river, was chosen as the county seat in 1837 and renamed Janesville. The river drew the attention of the first investors and settlers to reach the area. In Janesville, the water power was among the first resources to be developed, and commerce was centered along the banks of the river. Ferries were established, and bridges, dams, and mills were constructed in the first years of the settlement. Some traces of the early dams and their races remain today. A lumber yard was opened in 1843, and building materials became more readily available for the construction of dwellings, shops, and factories. In the early 1840s, local brick kilns also went into operation, burning clay with a characteristic deep red color. Limestone was quarried at Miltimore's Quarry in Monterey on the banks of the rock, which provided building stone and lime for mortar. Flour and woolen mills were constructed in the 1840s and the 1850s. Characteristically, mill buildings were four and five stories high. The four-story big mill, a grist mill finished in 1847, measured 40 by 80 feet and cost $45,000 to construct. Janesville's first commercial buildings predated the mills and dams by several years, with the earliest store opened by Ward and Lappin on Main Street in 1839. In 1844, a store was constructed on the west bank of the river, and by 1847, nearly two-thirds of Janesville's residents lived west of the river. This view, made before the Civil War, was taken from the east side, looking across the river. In 1845, with a population of 855, there were over 155 dwellings on both sides of the river. One observer counted 26 houses of brick, 9 of stone, 7 of log, and 115 of frame. Balloon frame construction, which was developed in the United States in the late 1830s, contributed to this number of frame structures. Balloon framing utilized a lightweight stud wall composed of dimensional cut lumber. It allowed the rapid construction of wood frame buildings. The first courthouse was constructed in 1842, and a brick school followed at the right in 1844. The Janesville Academy was opened in 1846, and the Wisconsin Institution for the Education of the Blind, shown here in 1849. At mid-century, Janesville was Wisconsin's second largest city and the focus of Rock County's economy. Its residents were primarily native-born, with the largest group from New York and New England. Among European immigrants, British, Irish, Scottish, and Welsh outnumbered all other groups. Flour, lumber, and woolen milling contributed to the economic success of the settlement. Between 1850 and the Civil War, despite financial panics and boom and bust cycles, Janesville experienced continued economic growth, unlike river cities in the area that had begun as hopefully but lacked the excellent location and resources. The city was well situated at the intersection of the roads and rail routes leading to Chicago and Milwaukee, where produce dealers competed for the trade of a large and rich surrounding territory. New roads and bridges were constructed and eventually three railroad bridges would cross the Rock River at Janesville. The first rails reached the city in 1853. A magnificent wooden trestle, which crossed the river at Monterey, brought the first railroad from Chicago in 1857. At the time of incorporation in 1853, the city's boundaries were quite extensive and would not be filled for nearly 100 years. Farms and a picturesque cemetery were included within city limits. A variety of new commercial and institutional and religious buildings appeared during this era, funded by a prosperous class of merchants, traders, and manufacturers who had grown wealthy in the city. Led by the established Yankee population, but with a growing number of successful German and Scandinavian immigrants, 
their prosperity expressed itself in elegant dwellings. Courthouse Hill was very sparsely built due to its steep bluffs, but opulent residences of merchants and bankers began to appear in the late 1850s and 1860s. Bluff top sites along the west side of the river in what is today called the Look West Historic District were similarly chosen by persons such as Stephen Williams and William Tallman for the construction of elaborate residences. Areas nearest the mills and factories, including portions of the Old Fourth Ward, were built up with inexpensive cottages. During the Civil War era, dwellings were also built along the roads which radiated from Janesville into the hinterland. Most were farmhouses, but some were conceived as country estates. New industries and manufactures of the Civil War era included carriage building and furniture making and the production of agricultural machinery. Activity remained focused along the river. Public improvements included schools, notably the Handsome High School completed in 1859. This building was constructed on the site of Janesville's first cemetery, now Jefferson Park, and its tall cupola could be seen from great distances. The most ambitious project of the period was the second Rock County Courthouse, completed in 1871. The four-story mansard roof building was considered one of the finest of its kind in the state. Lower Courthouse Park could be well viewed from the prominent tower of the courthouse. Hotels of this period, notably the Hyatt House of 1857, reached grand proportions. Following the Civil War, the decades between 1870 and 1890 saw a continued expansion of business and industry. By 1877, downtown Janesville looked like this. Cigar and cigar box manufacturers and tobacco warehousing were among industries which became increasingly important to the city. New buildings required by these industries demanded large, uninterrupted spaces for complicated new machinery. The Janesville Cotton Mill, completed in 1875, was equipped with the latest machinery. Retail merchants built new buildings and also remodeled old ones. Horse importing a Janesville specialty required mammoth display staples in the city, while the stock was kept on extensive farms outside the municipal limits. In the 1890s, a number of new commercial blocks were constructed, including the Jackman block. While the bulk of the manufacturing district increased, residential areas also expanded beyond easy walking distance of the downtown. Many of the new residential areas could be served with recently installed city services, including water and electricity. The pattern of expansion of the suburbs was influenced by the route of the streetcar. Streetcars, initially using horse-drawn cars, first ran on a regular schedule in 1886. By 1892, electric streetcars were installed and the routes were extended toward the edges of the city. In a pattern being repeated in cities across the country, a new type of suburban housing was encouraged with this new transit development. Large single-family residences on spacious lots made up the housing stock of Janesville's first suburbs. This development occurred along streetcar routes through the Centerway and Milton Avenue areas, out North Washington and South Main Streets, and eventually to Forest Park. Picturesque names given to other subdivisions included Riverview Park and Spring Brook. The establishment of the Janesville Country Club further reinforced an interest in suburban activity, especially golf. Despite a firm preference for single-family houses, a number of residents found housing in newly constructed flats. They housed professionals, businessmen, railroad conductors, and greatly appealed to retired persons. The city's population nearly doubled between 1890 and 1900, reaching over 18,000 at the turn of the century. This was the era of the passenger and freight train, as well as the streetcar. During this period, about 80 trains per day crossed at Janesville. There was a considerable public investment in a new high school, finished in 1895, a new city hall, and a new post office completed in 1902, and a public library opened in 1903. Lower Courthouse Park received its Civil War Memorial, located behind the fountain, in 1901. Among the most notable developments of the next decade was an ill-fated attempt at the production of automobiles at the Wisconsin Carriage Company. However, between 1919 and 1922, tractors were manufactured by the Samson Tractor Division of General Motors. Other industries grew in stature. By 1906, Parker Penn was reportedly the world's largest fountain pen manufacturer. The Court Street factory dates from 1919, 
and was remodeled in 1981 to corporate headquarters. City planning was a relatively new phrase when, in 1919, the Janesville Chamber of Commerce hired city planner John Nolan of Cambridge, Massachusetts. Nolan made recommendations for many aspects of the city's development, including a thoroughfare system, the development of the Rock River for park and recreation purposes, and the adoption of a zoning ordinance. The improvement of parks and drives with a river focus was an effort which had been initiated by the Janesville Park and Pleasure Drive Association in 1907, and Nolan's recommendations furthered that effort. A new high school was among other public investments of the 20s. By the time of the stock market crash in 1929, Janesville's population had reached 21,000. The building industry came to a halt during the Depression. Following the years of uncertainty, major growth began again after World War II. General Motors, whose plant, built in 1919, is shown here, and Parker Penn were mainstays of the economy and increasingly drew on a labor force from a larger area beyond the city limits. New residential construction increased at the edges of the city, with many new subdivisions in the 1950s and 1960s. One-story ranch houses were among the most popular choices for home builders. Picture windows and attached garages were standard features of the post-war dwelling. The 1960s and 1970s were decades of proposals for the planning of the central city. A parking lot was built over the Rock River in downtown Janesville in 1963. With the construction of I-90 in the early 1960s, impetus was given to the establishment of new businesses along Milton Avenue. The Janesville Mall was constructed in 1972. The retail center, which had existed in downtown Janesville since the 1840s, was challenged. Many businesses closed their doors or moved to the edge of town. A few of the founding retail families, such as the Bostwicks, remained. The 1970s were a time of considerable peril for historic buildings in American cities. In many communities, urban renewal left some business districts and neighborhoods virtually without a sense of their history. Janesville was fortunate to survive this period with much of its built history intact. In the 1980s, in particular, a number of key commercial properties, such as the Lappin Hayes and Fredendahl blocks, were rehabilitated to accommodate new interior uses while conserving historic exteriors. The revitalization of the commercial center of Janesville has been closely linked to the appreciation and preservation of its history and architectural heritage. The same spirit is evident in the efforts of many residents who have restored their houses to their original appearance. It is also evident in the rediscovery of the history and fine buildings within the city's early neighborhoods, including Courthouse Hill, Look West, Prospect Hill, and the Old Fourth Ward. Janesville's expansion after the Civil War was due to its prosperity as a manufacturing, trade, and transportation center. Merchants and entrepreneurs built a substantial downtown district filled with handsome commercial buildings and erected fine homes in the nearby residential areas. The last half of the 19th century might be regarded as Janesville's golden age of architecture, a time of prosperity which is evident in the buildings of a number of cities of southern Wisconsin. Much of Janesville's architectural heritage from this period is still amazingly intact. This presentation focuses on Janesville's wealth of historic architectural styles. The term architectural style can be defined as a definite type of architecture distinguished by special characteristics of structure and ornament. Style is not usually related to the function of a building, although some styles are closely associated with certain building types. The term vernacular describes buildings which are the products of local builders with little reference to high style. Vernacular architecture is functional, often plain in appearance, and adapted to immediate needs. In the next minutes, we will concentrate on identifying the characteristic features of each style with a bit of information about the history of each style. At the time the territory of Wisconsin was surveyed by the government land office and subsequently opened to settlement in the 1830s, 
The Greek Revival style was used for almost every type of building. The design source of this popular style was the Greek temple. The publication of views of ancient architecture, beginning in the 18th century, brought an awareness of Greek and Roman forms to America. Books and carpenters' manuals assisted in spreading the style from Maine to California by mid-century. Greek Revival buildings were usually clad in narrow clapboards, painted white, since the visual effects of this style depended largely on the effects of light and shadow. In Janesville and throughout Rock County, there were also many Greek Revival houses built of locally burned red or salmon-colored brick. Commercial blocks were also built in this style in the city's earliest business district, but few have survived. Among remaining examples is this small structure at 21 and a half North Main Street. Built of soft red brick, it is trimmed with limestone sills and lintels. Important details on many of Janesville's Greek Revival houses include returns at the eaves, regularly spaced windows with double hung sash, prominent cornice and eaves, and an entry framed with side lights. A variety of vernacular cottages and houses were built at mid-century in the old Fourth Ward. Several, near Rockport Road, were constructed of limestone quarried nearby. The tawny colored stone was rough cut with walls one to two feet thick. The Gothic Revival style was one of a number of picturesque styles popular at mid-century. With its romantic borrowing from a medieval past, the Gothic Revival contrasts with the classically inspired Greek Revival. Popular books such as Cottage Residences by landscape designer Andrew Jackson Downing with illustrations by Alexander Jackson Davis, which was first published in 1842, set out plans for picturesque houses surrounded by landscape grounds. The Gothic Revival House usually has a steeply pitched roof, often with dormers. The pointed arch and elaborate barge boards are hallmarks of the style. An outstanding example in Janesville is the Stephen Williams House, built in 1855 at 317 Madison Street. The Gothic Revival was also a favored style for 19th century church building in the city. St. Paul's German Lutheran Church, now the All Saints Anglican Church, was built in 1883 and its steeple completed 10 years later. Important details on Janesville's Gothic Revival houses include the steeply pitched roof, pointed arch or square-headed windows, and sometimes elaborate barge boards. Across America, the Italianate style was popular in the mid-19th century. In Janesville, it was fashionable for residential and commercial construction during the pre-Civil War expansion of industry and during the substantial surge of population growth. The Italianate style was the first which seems to have fully captured the imagination of Janesville's builders, who delighted in its rich ornamentation. The design sources of this style lie in rural Italian architecture, specifically in that of Tuscany. Introduced in America in the 1830s, the promoters of the Gothic Revival, Downing and Davis, also recommended Italian villas in their books, and many versions of the style were popularized in pattern books. The 20-room William M. Tallman House at 440 North Jackson Street is the city's best-known 19th century building and an outstanding example of the Italian style. Built between 1855 and 1857, it was widely admired and copied by other Janesville builders. The Timothy Jackman House on Courthouse Hill, built in 1858, imitates some of its details. Thomas Lappin House on Courthouse Hill, built in 1864, has elaborate window surrounds and its brackets spring from acanthus leaf bases. Cream-colored brick, likely burned in Edgerton or in Milwaukee, appeared in Janesville buildings in the early 1850s and is associated with high styled as well as vernacular examples. The Skelly House on East Milwaukee Street, built in 1878, and the Conrad Cottages on Milton Avenue, dating from the mid-1880s, are good examples of the use of cream brick. The Myers Building at 123 North Main Street and the Fredendall Block, both dating from 1868, are characteristic of commercial building treatment from this period. Italian style shops, stores, and office blocks were built with characteristic round arched window surrounds with elaborate decoration. Aided by a variety of published plans, local carpenters and masons designed many of the buildings we have seen. In the late 1850s and 1860s, several architects established offices in Janesville. Among them was German immigrant George F. Schultz, who designed the Fredendahl block, as well as houses and churches. Important details on many of Janesville's Italianate-style houses include brackets at the eaves, a most typical feature, 
and elaborate square or round arch trim at the windows. Porch posts are usually square with chamfered corners. A handful of examples of the French Second Empire style with their characteristic mansard roofs can be found in Janesville. This double pitched roof with a characteristic steep lower slope can be found on nine buildings in the city, most dating from the late 1860s and 1870s. The Court Street Methodist Church on South Main Street was constructed in 1869 as a church occupying the second and third floors and as retail space on the first. The Wadsworth Wheelock House dates from about 1868. Its mansard roof is slate covered. The simplest mansard roof dwellings are represented by this cottage on Milton Avenue. Despite a financial panic in 1893, there were many new houses constructed in Janesville in the period 1885 to 1900. Most show the influence of the Queen Anne style. The design roots of this style extend back to the 1870s. Queen Anne style houses were first associated with seacoast, resorts, and expensive suburbs but were soon built in a variety of urban settings. Although there is much variety among Queen Anne style buildings and they draw on diverse sources, picturesque effects are common to all and many materials are put to use. Brick, stone, tile, patterned shingles, stained glass, and stamped or paneled wood are among surfaces employed, often on the same building. Roofs are also complex, combining hip and gable forms with turrets and towers. Pattern books exerted strong influence on the diffusion of this eclectic style. American carpenters used lathes, chisels, and gouges to produce a variety of punched, incised, spindled, and knobbed detail. Most Queen Anne houses in Janesville were created from published or mail order plans, and in later years they were even ordered from Sears Roebuck catalogs. Architect designed, high styled examples are represented by several houses on Courthouse Hill including the Alan P. Lovejoy House, designed by James Douglas, and the Claremont Jackman House, designed by F.B. Townsend. Both date from the 1880s. The Queen Anne style was employed in the remodeling of the Lappin Block, an Italianate-style building constructed in 1855. After Thomas Lappin's death in 1899, two contractors, Dennis and Michael Hayes, purchased the block. Their $35,000 renovation included an elevator, new bays, and windows, and a new stamped sheet metal cornice, as shown here in the 1950s. The building was largely transformed from Italianate to Queen Anne. The building owes its present appearance to a recent rehabilitation project. Although there are a number of brick examples, Janesville's Queen Anne-style houses are a celebration of wood in many forms. Important details to conserve are narrow wooden siding, shingles, carved and turned porch trim, and the abundance of exterior treatments which make this style unique. The World's Columbian Exposition held in Chicago in 1893 was very influential in establishing the dominance of what was known as Beaux-Arts Classicism. Beaux-Arts Classicism was based on the revival of classical forms, primarily Roman. While the early buildings associated with the style were usually large public structures such as the 1902 Public Library, Elements became well integrated into domestic architecture. A prominent classical porch and Palladian window are typical features. This residence at 102 Jefferson, built about 1900, well exhibits the fully developed features of the style, as does the Hiram Merrill House at 202 St. Lawrence, built in 1904. Both employ colossal orders, embracing several stories of the facade. The various period revivals popular between 1900 and 1930 also shared nostalgia for the American and European past. A variety of colonial, Georgian, and federal, Tudor and English cottage, and Spanish revival houses were popular with builders before World War II. A number were architect designed and are distinguished by fine craftsmanship as well as quality materials. The bungalow, an economical one or one and a half story house, and its larger counterpart, the Craftsman House, were first popularized in California, but reached a wide audience across the United States due to the publications of furniture designer and educator Gustav Stickley. In his popular magazine, The Craftsman, published between 1901 and 1916, Stickley promoted the honest design and construction materials of the bungalow, wood, stone, and stucco which he saw as an antidote to the insults of the machine age. 
This innovative architecture stressed economy, simplicity, and efficient interior planning. Janesville's best-known bungalows are those associated with the Janesville Housing Corporation and General Motors Development west of Milton Avenue at Benton and Sherman Avenues. Blocks of these small houses were built in 1919. More individually crafted houses, a few of which were architect design, can be seen across the city. The larger craftsman house is well represented by this design by local architect Frank Kemp. Important details of Janesville's bungalow are narrow wooden siding or shingles, multi-paned windows, and a front porch often with sturdy square posts. Exposed rafters are also common. The Prairie House is associated with the turn-of-the-century buildings of the Prairie School of Wisconsin architect Frank Lloyd Wright and a small group of other Midwestern designers. It represents a rejection of most forms of historic ornament, particularly that derived from European sources. Prairie School buildings have a low and horizontal appearance, hugging the Midwestern landscape. The Cargill Barker House at 308 St. Lawrence, shown here, was designed in 1904 by Chicago architect Hugh Garden. Prairie ideas also had an impact on the builders of period revival houses, as can be seen in this stucco example on South Wisconsin Street. The hipped roof and overhanging eaves, as well as the flared base, are prairie ideas. The four-square house might be considered a subtype of the prairie house. It was popularized in magazines and pattern books between about 1905 and 1915. In Janesville, the four-square house has a low-pitched hip roof. A prominent entry and a long one-story porch are also typical features. Art Deco, a name derived from Exposition de Art Décorative held in Paris in 1925, is associated with a few buildings in Janesville, most dating from the late 1920s and 1930s. The Monterey Hotel of 1929, unaltered above the first floor, well demonstrates Art Deco attention to surface decoration. Spandrels above and below the windows are decorated with terracotta. The corner tower is embellished with Egyptian and Assyrian-inspired reliefs. Little building activity occurred in Janesville between 1920 and the end of World War II. During this period, the popularity of historic styles was declining. The international style had a great impact on building in the United States after the war. It reflected the introduction of new materials and building technologies, and was characterized by the absence of ornament and an emphasis on geometric forms. The international style was seen in Janesville primarily in commercial and institutional buildings, notably in the Rock County Courthouse of 1957. One important aspect of the rehabilitation and restoration of the city's many 19th and early 20th century houses is an understanding of the details and elements of their historic styles. As shown in these views, Janesville's diverse collection of buildings adds greatly to the experience and enjoyment of being in the city for resident and visitor alike. The National Historic Preservation Act, passed by Congress in 1966, declared that the spirit and direction of the nation are founded upon and reflected in its historic past. The act encouraged the preservation of the historical and cultural resources of the nation as living parts of community life. An appreciation of Janesville's historical and cultural heritage extends well beyond the preservation of single landmarks to the preservation of our neighborhoods, and landscapes. As planner Grady Clay wrote, preserve one building and you preserve one building. Preserve the setting and the larger environment and you keep open a thousand doors and opportunities for a better life for the entire community. Nationally, the benefits of preservation have been well demonstrated through thousands of successful projects which gave new life to old buildings. Janesville has lost some of its historic buildings in recent years. However, although not every building can be incorporated into plans for change in a growing city, adaptive reuse has proved to be a very cost-effective alternative to demolition. 
Unfortunately, poor maintenance and careless exterior changes alter and destroy more buildings than demolition. Janesville is among a number of Wisconsin communities where careful and long-range planning is focused on the city's architectural heritage. Building on the work begun in 1975 by the Rock County Historical Society and the Rock County Planning Department, in 1980, Janesville's Department of Community Development conducted an intensive citywide survey of architecturally and historically significant properties. In 1981, the City Council adopted a new citywide zoning ordinance. It included provision for the creation of the Historic Commission and Historic Overlay Districts. The Historic Overlay District regulations established a procedure for review of building permits for alterations to significant buildings. Courthouse Hill, which includes the Hiram Merrill House, shown here, was the first local overlay district designated under the ordinance. The district contains 219 properties. The National Register is an important planning tool used by the Historic Commission and the State Historic Preservation Office. Properties and districts are listed in the National Register because of their significance on a national, state, or local basis to American history, architectural history, engineering, and or anthropology. National Register listing does not mean that an owner needs to take special measures to restore or preserve a property unless federal tax credits or grants are utilized. Janesville's local historic preservation ordinance, however, can provide an additional level of protection. The Janesville Historic Commission participates in the Certified Local Government Program, and it has received a number of grants from the State Historic Preservation Office. These grants have supported intensive surveys, the preparation of National Register nominations, and guidebooks for the downtown and a number of historic neighborhoods. Since 1985, five districts have been added to the National Register of Historic Places. These districts include a total of approximately 1,800 properties. Janesville's National Register listings represent about 15% of those listed in the state. The Historic Commission has also developed its role in assisting property owners with rehabilitation work. The Commission and Janesville Community Development Department staff sponsor seminars and workshops and maintain a library of resource materials. In 1988, the Commission published Caring for Historic Houses in Janesville, Guidelines for Residential Rehabilitation. Rehabilitation work sponsored by the Community Development Department is sensitive to the character of historic buildings. Housing rehabilitation has been a primary focus of the Community Development Block Grant Program administered by the Community Development Department. Loans are made to income eligible property owners for building rehabilitation and several houses have been acquired and rehabilitated and resold as demonstration projects. Work done on historic buildings must be accomplished in accordance with historic rehabilitation guidelines and new buildings are designed to fit into historic streetscapes. In recent years, tax increment financing funds were used to make streetscape improvements along North and South Main Streets, to redevelop Lower Courthouse Park, and to create the River Walkway and parks along North Main Street. Further Janesville preservation successes have included the dramatic renovations of the Cotton Mills and the Hayes Block. Both projects use the tax credits available for certified rehabilitation of National Register properties. Finally, visitors as well as residents have many opportunities to enjoy the city's historic architecture. In addition to the district guides and a heritage map available from the Janesville Historic Commission, there are a variety of events sponsored by the Rock County Historical Society throughout the year. The Rock County Historical Society Museum is housed in the former Janesville Armory at 10 South High Street. The public may tour the Lincoln Tallman House, built between 1855 and 1857, at the Tallman Restorations at 440 North Jackson Street. The Tallman Restorations also include the Tallman Horse Barn and an 1845 stone house. Janesville is proud of its history and architecture. The Janesville Historic Commission is dedicated to enhancing public awareness, appreciation, and conservation of these important resources.